44 years back in July 1978 Louis Brown the first IVF baby was born it was described by the Time magazine as the most awaited birth in 2000 years. This gave hope to millions of childless couples. And since then, almost 8 million babies have been born through some kind of artificial reproductive technology, including IVF. So hello everyone, this is Dr. Anjali Kumar once again bringing you greetings from Maitri. Maitri is a space where we talk anything and everything about women's health. So today we will be talking about IVF. I hope you've been keeping pace with our infertility series. Last week we spoke about IUI and today we will talk about IVF. This is also known as test tube baby. It is a procedure in which the egg and the sperm are combined outside the body. The egg is fertilized outside the body and the fertilized egg later is then implanted in the uterus. So anything which is happening outside the body is called in vitro. Anything which is happening inside the body is called in vivo, hence the term in vitro fertilization. So what are the indications for going for IVF? So number one is the tubal factor, which means problems in the fallopian tubes. So obviously in case the tubes are bad uh, or they are blocked because of some previous infections, maybe previous surgeries or endometriosis, the fertilization will not be possible and obviously the IVF is needed. Second reason is the male factor which means in case the semen count, the sperm concentration is low, the motility of the sperms is low or the sperms are abnormal and the IUI has failed. Obviously now the next option is IVF. The third is ovulation disorders, which means in case the ovulation is not happening, it's happening irregularly or it is absent, severe cases of polycystic ovary. Then of course in IVF, we have a controlled and a programmed ovulation making pregnancy rates better. Then unexplained infertility, which means everything is fine. Still the pregnancy is not happening, IUIs have been tried, multiple treatments have, have been tried. So the next option is then IVF. Then in case somebody has undergone a fertility preservation or a egg freezing because unfortunately they were diagnosed with some kind of a cancer which required chemotherapy or a radiotherapy. Next indication is post egg freezing. We spoke about egg freezing in detail few weeks back at Maitri. So in case egg freezing was done because of some social reasons like career, academics or uh, there was a history of premature menopause. So post egg freezing the pregnancy will be possible only through IVF. In case there is a problem in the mother's uterus or the pregnancy poses a serious health risk to the mother. So in that case, mother's eggs are removed, they are fertilized by the father's sperms outside and now the fertilized egg or the embryo is deposited in somebody else's uterus. This is known as surrogacy. So there also pregnancy will be possible only through an IVF. So now let's understand how is the IVF done. So IVF has practically six steps. Number one is counseling. Second is ovarian stimulation. Third is ovum pickup. Fourth is semen collection. Fifth is fertilization and the embryo transfer and sixth is post-transfer care. So let's talk about each one of them in detail. The first is the counseling. All infertility treatments including IVF are mentally, physically and emotionally very taxing. So make sure that you have spoken to your doctor 
Second is the ovarian stimulation. So the ovaries are stimulated with fertility drugs known as gonadotrophins to make multiple eggs mature in the ovary. Then the next step is the ovum retrieval or it is commonly known as the ovum pickup. So for this, usually the patient is admitted to the hospital. It is done under anesthesia. An ultrasound probe is inserted into the vagina to locate those developing follicles. A needle is then finely guided uh, under the ultrasound guidance to reach the follicles and the eggs are sucked out. They are aspirated out and immediately they are sent to the laboratory. The next step is the semen collection. So at that very time, the partner or the husband is asked to give his fresh semen. Uh, then the egg and the sperm are combined outside in a laboratory. Uh, the semen sample can also be a frozen sample in case there is severe uh, paucity of the number of the sperms. The sperms can be extracted surgically also. And uh, in case, in such cases, we do a procedure which is known as IVF ICSI. So ICSI stands for intracytoplasmic sperm injection, which means a single sperm is actually picked up and put inside the egg. After that, once the fertilization happens, the fertilized egg is then monitored for its growth typically on day three or day five now the fertilized egg now it is known as the embryo is now uh, deposited back into the uterus this is known as the embryo transfer uh, post transfer usually a uh, very basic care is advised uh, this means that you may be expected to have a little bit of soreness or a little bit of heaviness in your abdomen. You might have little cramping or little uh, spotting. Uh, you might be given certain medications to support the pregnancy and typically two weeks later, the doctor orders a test which is known as beta HCG to confirm the uh, pregnancy. The most important question what is the success rate for the IVF? So the IVF success rate depends upon number one, the age of the partners, both mother and the father, the reason for the infertility, whether the self egg or the sperm was used or was that a donor egg or a donor sperm, whether it was the fresh egg and the fresh sperm or it was a frozen egg or the frozen sperm and also where the procedure happened. And in most of the cases in uh, age less than 35 years, most of the good centers, uh, they claim a success rate of 40 to 50%. So it is very important to seek the treatment from the right sources, get a right diagnosis made, be scientific in your approach to get the best pregnancy rates. I know IVF is a very big topic. In today's video, we have just covered the basics. So if you have questions about IVF, I'll be very, very happy to answer them. Please leave your questions in the comments below. For more information, you can also visit our website, metriwoman.com. You can also share your fertility journey with us by writing a blog post on our website. We will be very, very happy to share that with our readers. We also do e-consultations through our website. So please take care and today like always, if you found this information useful, please do not forget to like, share and subscribe to Maitri and we will see you soon.